Welcome back to the Fulton County Gospel News Podcast. My name is Barry O'Dell, and I am your host. Fulton County Gospel News is a bi-monthly publication of the Church of Christ in Mammoth Spring, Arkansas. If you'd like to learn more about the paper, visit our website, www.mammothspringchurchofchrist.com. And on the left-hand side of the homepage, there are several tabs that are associated with FCGN. So we started a while back a series of of podcast on this overall theme of I Believe. We're working in the paper, working our way through the biblical text in Fulton County Gospel News, looking at different thoughts throughout the text of the Bible, starting with Genesis chapter 1, obviously, on different things that are part of our faith as Christians, what we believe in. You know, the, an argument that's commonly made against churches of Christ is, well, you guys are only known what for what you are against, you know, you're against instrumental music, you're against female preachers, and what do you actually stand for? So, having been accused of that myself, I thought, well, let's let's write some articles that deal with what what do we believe, and and where does this where does this belief, where does this faith come from? You know, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter ten and verse seventeen that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So, we need to allow our belief system, if you will our faith, to be trained, to be developed by the Word of God. So the September-October 2021 edition of the paper deals primarily with the promises made to Abraham as recorded in Genesis chapter 12. So I wrote an article, and then my friend Brock Kendall, who preaches for the Harrisburg Church of Christ in Harrisburg, Arkansas, wrote an article. And then another preacher, Mitch Sparks. He's a new preacher at the Bay Church of Christ in Bay, Arkansas. Both of those guys contributed articles to me on the subject of the promises given to Abraham. So as you read Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, well, I'll tell you what, let's just go ahead and read it, and then we'll get started. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house to a land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So I would say most Bible students are familiar with the promises there given to Abraham, and we're going to talk about the article that I wrote is, well, I titled it, I Believe in the Faithfulness of God. So like I said, there are three of us writing on this particular biblical text, Genesis 12, verses 1 through 3. I had one writer focus on the land promise, one writer focus on the seed promise, and the article that I wrote, while it's entitled, I Believe in the Faithfulness of God, I focus in on the promise here of the fact that Abraham was promised by God, Abram at this time, was promised by God that he would become a great nation. One of the things that we see throughout the text of the Bible, both Old and New Testaments, is this concept that God is faithful. So some of the verses that I share in the article would be Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 9, the faithful God who keeps covenant. Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 7 says that the Lord is faithful. And of course, there are, there are many verses in the New Testament that express this thought. And I guess probably the best known would be 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13, where we are told that uh, God is faithful and He will not permit us to be tempted above what we are able to but will, with that temptation, also make a way of escape that we may be able to bear it. So God, the God that we serve is the God that made the promises to Abraham. He was faithful to Abraham. He will be faithful to us. So let's think about this great nation promise. So back up in Genesis chapter 11, we're told a little bit about the, the lineage of Abraham. I'm going to start reading in Genesis 11 and verse 31. It says, And Terah took his son Abram, And his grandson Lot, the son of Haran, and his daughter-in-law Sarai, his son Abram's wife. And they went out with him from Ur of the Chaldees to go to the land of Canaan. And they came to Haran and dwelt there. So the days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and Terah died in Haran. And there's a little bit more background information prior to that, but God, as you open up to Genesis chapter 12, God then communicates to Abraham, to Abram, I want you to leave your family, I want you to leave your land, and I'm going to show you where to go, and I'm going to make you a great nation. That's one of those three promises uh, that's made. And so, 
I, the, the idea of I will make of you a great nation. Well, one of the things to, to understand as you consider that promise is what's told to us in Genesis chapter 11 and verse 30, that Sarai was barren and had no child. Well, from the human perspective, since then, since then that is the case, his wife cannot have children, how in the world would this promise be fulfilled? So you progress down through Genesis chapter 12, the first three verses, then you get to verse 4, and we learn that Abraham's 75 years old. Well, that's, that's old for having children, we would say. At that time also we know that Sarah, Sarai would be 65 years old, and yet God still makes this promise. Now, we keep reading through the text. I'm turning over to Genesis chapter 15, and we get down to Genesis chapter 15. Well, I'll just start reading in verse 1. It says, After these things the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. But Abram said, Abram said Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless? And the heir of my house is Eliar of Damascus, Eliezer of Damascus. Then Abram said, Lord, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. So th this is quite a situation that Abraham find, Abram finds himself in. I keep his name's not been changed yet. That doesn't happen for a little bit. But anyway, Abram does not have a child of his own. He has not brought seed into the world, we might say. So we turn into Genesis chapter 16, and ten years have passed. Abram was 75 years when that promise was made to him that he would become a great nation. You look at Genesis chapter 16 and verse 3, and it says, Abram dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan. So now he's 75 years old, and he still does not have a child. So what's he going to do? Well, Sarai has a plan, and that is to take her handmaid, Hagar, and you can have a child with her. And that'll be the son of promise. That, that'll, be the, that'll be the heir from which we will be made a great nation. Well, the problem is, that was not God's plan. God's plan was for Abram and Sarai to have a child. So ten years have passed, and they think to themselves that they were going to take things into their own hands. Now we know that as you keep reading Genesis 16 and you, you read other passages such as Galatians chapter 4, we learn that, that Ishmael, who was born to Hagar by Abraham, did become a great nation. But it was not the son of promise. It was not the son of Sarai. And so you get to Genesis chapter 17, and 24 years have passed since the promise is made. So, I mean, think about that for just a minute, okay? So I'm 42 years old. 24 years is more than half of my life. You go from 75 you're going to become a great nation. You have no children. Now you're 99 years old. So you, I could see, I could see the idea of perhaps some doubt creeping in. That is a long time. Ten years is a long time, and that's why they tried to fix things with Hagar. But that wasn't God's plan. That wasn't God's promise. So Genesis 17 and verse 1, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you and will ex and will multiply you exceedingly. So there it is again. But he has no child with Sarah. That is, I will multiply you exceedingly. This is the text. Then you get down to Genesis 17 and verse five, where Abram's name is changed to Abraham, and so he he goes from exalted father to father of many nations. And this is where this is the same chapter where we have recorded the institution of of circumcision as a sign of the covenant that was made, but the promise is reiterated. He's going to become this father of a multitude. Notice this in the text. As you keep reading Genesis chapter 17, you get down to verse 19, and there is there is what you might call a back and forth between Abraham and God. Verse 19 says, Then God said, No, Sarah your wife shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his descendants after him. And as for Ishmael, I've heard you. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. He shall beget twelve princes, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you. Now the end here, so that's Genesis 17 verse 21. 
Listen to the end of verse 21. Whom Sarah will, shall bear to you at the set time next year. That is a significant phrase in the promises of God. Well, of course, you go to Genesis chapter 18 and chapter 19 and chapter 20 and, and nothing. Abraham still does not have a son with Sarai. So I turn my Bible to Genesis chapter 21. And it says, And the Lord visited Sarah as he said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had spoken. We're talking about the fact that I believe in the faithfulness of God. He made Abraham a promise, Abram rather, a promise when Abram was 75 years old. Well, now he's 99. And Sarah conceives, Genesis 21 and verse 2. And Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, listen to this, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. So the whole Hagar incident that's recorded in Genesis chapter 16 obviously was not within the set time. It was not according to the promise of God. And I would say it's often the case that people take things into their own hands when, when I think they feel that God is not acting when and how they feel he ought to act. And that's never a good idea. It wasn't with Abraham. It wasn't God's promise. That wasn't God's plan. But now the set time has come, and Sarah gives birth to a son. Uh, Genesis 21, verse 3, And Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore to him, Isaac. Then Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God commanded him. Now Abraham was 100 years old, when his son Isaac was born to him, 25 years. Again, that is a long, that's a quarter of a century. That's a long time. But you see, the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob is a faithful God. And that God does not work on our calendar, you might say. He doesn't work on our timetable. He had a set time in which he was going to work. Isaac is born. The son of promise is born. Well, you turn your Bible then to Genesis chapter 26, and now you have God dealing directly with Isaac. So listen to this, Isaiah chapter 26, and I'll start in verse 3. Dwell in this land, and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I will give all these lands, and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father, and I will make your descendants multiply as the stars of heaven. I will give to your descendants all these lands, and in your seed all the nations of the earth will be blessed, because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statues, statutes, and my laws. So the promise extends now from communicating to Abraham about these things to now communicating to Isaac, the son of promise, about these things. And it's not just the... So we're, t we're, f we're focusing in this podcast on, the, on just the great nation promise, you know, don't forget there was the land promise, the land of inheritance, and then there was the seed promise, which through which all nations of the earth would be blessed. And of course, we we know that what that's talking about uh, with Jesus Christ and and salvation coming through Him. But the main point of all this being, God is faithful. It's interesting when you read in Genesis chapter twenty-five about the birth of Isaac's children. Jacob and Esau. Of course, the promise we know extends to Jacob, who would become Israel. But when Rebekah is pregnant, we're going to, well, I'm just going to read a few verses here. This is Genesis 25 and verse, uh, beginning in verse 21. It says, Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord granted his plea. And Rebekah, his wife, conceived. But the children struggled together within her, and she said, If all is well, why am I like this? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. Two peoples shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. So this is a direct communication from God about what's going on with, with Rebecca and with this pregnancy. But see, the pregnancy here, again, it's directly connected to the promise to Abraham, and this extends far beyond, far beyond the, the infant's that are that are going to be born here shortly. This goes to two nations, verse 23, two peoples that would be separated from her body. So we keep reading Genesis 25, 24. So when her days were fulfilled for her to give birth, indeed there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red. He was like a hairy garment all over 
So they called his name Esau. Afterward, his brother came out, and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. So his name was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. So Jacob and Esau are born. Now, we know that Jacob's name is, at a later date, changed to Israel. And Esau, according to Genesis chapter 36 and verse 1, Esau becomes the nation of Edom. And so the promise extends from Abraham to Isaac and then, of course, to Jacob. Now, here's the thing. This, as you continue reading through the book of Genesis, of course, from, from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob, of course, Jacob has his children. Uh, one of Jacob's children is Joseph. And then, of course, after Joseph is Benjamin. But, but a lot of things kind of hinge on Joseph, you might say, because I, I can't go into all of this in detail. just don't have the time. But you get to Genesis chapter 37, and you see the, the envy between Joseph and his older brothers. They sell him into slavery. He goes into Egypt. And in the process of time, he gains favor by the hand of God with the Egyptians, and he becomes second in power. So that's, again, that's kind of a quick summation of the life of Joseph, but it's all connected to the promises given to Abraham, to Isaac, and then to Jacob. So when we get to the life of Joseph, they're in Egypt, and as, as the book of Genesis ends, and, and J, uh, Joseph's brothers have, have come to Egypt because there was a famine in their land, and they're seeking corn, and, or rather grain, and sustenance. So they're brought to Egypt. And there was about 70 people who were brought to Egypt. And when Joseph and his brothers, when the father dies, when Jacob dies, Joseph's brothers are afraid of, you know, hey, what's he going to do to us? We sold him into slavery. He's probably going to kill us. Well, listen here to the, to I would say, not only the providence, but the faithfulness of God. This is when Joseph is with his brothers after the death of their father. Genesis fifty nineteen. Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. Now therefore do not be afraid. I will provide for you and for your little ones. And, be comf and he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. Well, you have the growth of the nation beginning. And of course, as you turn from Genesis chapter 50, you get into Exodus chapter 1. Joseph dies. That generation dies. A new Pharaoh in Egypt comes up who did not know Joseph, and he enslaves the, the Hebrew people. Now again, when you get to Exodus chapter 1 and verse 5, all the descendants of Jacob were 70 who went down into Egypt. Joseph and his family, they were already there. But listen to this. This is Exodus chapter 1, verse 6. And Joseph died and all his brothers and all that generation. But the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly, multiplied and grew exceedingly mighty, and the land was filled with them. So think back to the promise given to Abraham all the way back in Genesis chapter 12. I'm going to make of you a great nation. When we get to the book of Deuteronomy, we get to Deuteronomy chapter 10. I'm turning over there. And listen to verse... I'll just read verse 22. Deuteronomy 10, 22. Your fathers went down to Egypt with 70 persons, and now the Lord your God has made you as the stars of heaven in multitude. And the interesting thing is, those are the exact words of the promise that God spoke to Abraham back in Genesis chapter 15 and verse 5. He told Abraham, if you can count the stars in the heaven, you will also be able to count the number of the descendants that you will have. And remember, Genesis 15, that was stated before Isaac was even born. But you know, that's the text where we are told that Abraham believed God, and God accounted it to him for righteousness. Abraham, Abram, at that point, Abram believed in the faithfulness of God. And so we have these biblical records of, of not only the promise promises given to Abraham in Genesis 12 and verses 1 through 3 when he was 75 years old, but then we see the carrying out, the fulfillment of those promises, the birth of Isaac in Genesis chapter 21, the birth of Jacob recorded in Genesis chapter 25, the promises that were given to Abraham initially extended to Isaac, then extended to Jacob, and then we get to the land of Egypt, and the people of Israel are exceedingly mighty. 
Now here's the interesting connection. We'll wrap it up. So over in Galatians chapter 3, beginning in verse 26, Paul's writing and he says, For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ. And if you are Christ's, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promises. See, you and I, if you're a member of the Lord's church, if you've been baptized into Christ for the remission of your sins, you've been added to the Lord's body, and as such, you are, an, you are a spiritual descendant of Abraham. Not a fleshly descendant. That, you know, that was done away with. Remember in Matthew chapter 3, remember John the baptizer told the Pharisees that axe is laid to the root of the trees. That, that physical lineage business, that's done with. If you've been baptized into Christ... You are an heir according to the promise. You are a beneficiary of the promises that God made to Abram all the way back in Genesis chapter 12. I believe in the faithfulness of God, the life of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, and particularly the life of Joseph and the providence of God that, that I would say reigned throughout the life of Joseph, preserving his life, putting him in a position of authority. It, it displays time and time again, the life of Joseph does the faithfulness of God. The God that we serve today under the new covenant of Christ is the same God. So here's one of the verses that I thought of as I was writing this article on the faithfulness of God. It's Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown towards His name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. See that? God is not unrighteous to forget your work. That's because God is faithful. The God that we serve is faithful. He keeps His promise. He keeps covenant. And so, as Christians today in the 21st century, a few thousand years removed from the promise given to Abraham, we are promised that we can live with Him in eternity. Titus chapter 1 and verse 2, uh, I think of 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 through 13, we have this eternal life, and this eternal life is in His Son. Folks, that is a promise from the faithful God. And we can rest assured that, that he will keep his word just like he kept his word with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And that, that, that family of what was 70 at one point became like the stars of heaven in multitude. That God is the same God that promised me that I can go to heaven. I believe in the faithfulness of God, and I hope you do too. You know, getting more familiar with, with the Old Testament really helps us see things like that the accounts of people's lives and, and the, the working of God throughout their lives to bring about His purposes. And it's interesting, again, when you follow the promises given to Abraham, how many times God tells him, at the set time, this will happen. God has a plan, He has a purpose, and He is working it out. He will work it out, and He is faithful in what He has said. I believe in the faithfulness of God. All right, folks, thanks for listening to the Fulton County Gospel News Podcast. If you're listening on the Podbean app, if you have any questions or comments, you're able to, to comment on each individual episode of, of this particular podcast. Let me encourage you, if you would, please like, subscribe, share this content. Our goal here at the Mammoth Spring Church of Christ is to get God's Word out as far as we can in as, in, in as many different formats as is possible. So do those things for us, please. Uh, recommend this if, if, if you have folks who would like to have this type of content. We're on Podbean, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, Fulton County Gospel News Podcast. So thank you for listening today, and uh, we've got more coming up on this particular subject of the promises given to Abraham. So watch, and we'll be sending out the next episode soon. Thanks for listening today, and we will catch you on the next episode.